I hear people say all the time that real estate is the same all over, and it's really not. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about evaluating markets, how we do it, and why you should think about that before investing in real estate. If you're looking at a market, Cincinnati is not like Chicago. It's not like Tallahassee or Tennessee or even Texas. And you really have to drill down into that to understand truly what makes that market tick. The reality of going into a market without doing the due diligence is a lot like driving a sports car at 200 miles an hour with blinders on. It's not advised and you really should look very carefully at doing that before you cause an accident. And when you're looking at a market, the macro analysis is very important. You need to look at each level of the market. First of all, there's employment. There's taxes in the state or the city. There is the availability of said product. There are the external factors like who is forcing people to move in or out of the area and what is causing that fluctuation in people. Because really, if it boils down to one thing, it's the people that move in that create the demand for more apartments and more storage units and more commercial space, more gas stations for that matter. So you really need to understand the external and the internal macro factors of every single market. You really need to look at growth rates. We often hear people talk about everybody's moving to Texas, and that's true, but not everybody's moving to where maybe you want to invest in Texas. When we start to look at deals, we start with looking state by state. Once we find states that have great economics on a statewide level, we begin to look into their individual markets and start to take those apart. And we look at all kinds of different things. We look at what is the growth rate of that particular area. Because without new people coming in, scarcity is not gonna be the problem. Supply and demand may be in equilibrium now. They may be a little bit out of sync, but without more people coming in, you're never gonna see that being forced to a new level where prices escalate quickly. You're never going to be able to see the true growth potential of a flat market that you would see in a market with a high growth rate. And there's a lot of contributing factors to that growth rate. Some of those are as simple as what are the taxes in the state? What are the business taxes? Who is going to want to pay those? What is the insurance cost in a particular state? After the last hurricane that just went through Florida, I can guarantee you they're going to see higher insurance rates in Florida, which if you're an operator of commercial property of any kind, you're going to see that as a bit of a deterrent to your tenant because they're going to look at that and go, this is a cost that I have to factor for. Let's talk about employment. It's very important to look at how stable is the economy for employees moving into the area. In Boise, Idaho, we used to struggle with this 20 years ago because we didn't have very many large employers. We had Albertsons, we had Micron, we had Boise Cascade, but we didn't have a lot of our jobs concentrated in those areas. What we have now is we have probably 25 large scale employers in the area that are based here and or have major operations here that can give some sense of security to an employee moving here. If you're an accountant working for, let's say you're working for Hewlett Packard in their accounting department in a particular city and you lose your job with that particular company, how many other options are you gonna have for that kind of employment in the area? And if there are a lot of things happening and a lot of growth going in that market, you're gonna continue to see people moving in and taking the chance on a market because they know that there are other options for employment if this one doesn't pan out. When you're looking at how influx of people affects property, that really is a simple supply and demand economic factor. When people look at an area and they see scarcity, they're willing to maybe pay more. They may get in a hurry and do things that they normally wouldn't because they don't want to miss out. They've got FOMO and let's face it, that's not always the best thing to have when you're in a buyer's position and you're trying to find something. But it's also a great thing to look at if you're looking at being in the seller's seat. Sometimes that plays for you, sometimes supply gets out ahead of that, demand eases, and you see soft spots in the market. So make sure the markets you pick, you're willing to be in long-term. The other thing to look at is what are the future plans of the city or the state? Are they planning to grow? Are they welcoming to growth? Are they opposed to it? There's a lot of things that have happened in cities like Austin where 10 years ago they were very pro-growth. That's changed a lot now that they are not quite so pro-growth. In fact, they're really against Airbnbs in that area and they're starting to pass legislation that makes that whole process much more painful. So without knowing that and looking at what the city's plans are, you could get blindsided by what you're being told or being sold. You wanna also look at what technologies in smart city innovations are happening. Let's just be realistic here. No 
nobody wants to live in the middle of a cornfield, but at the same time, if you're not attracting high-tech jobs and bringing in what the latest and greatest technology is gonna provide, you've got a city that may be on the outs already, maybe headed the way of the dinosaur because they're not being innovative and they're not bringing in new business. I think there are plenty of states in the Rust Belt that fit that description because they have not been able to keep up with the innovations of other smart cities like Raleigh, North Carolina, or even Orlando, Florida, and some of these others that have brought lots of tech in. Austin is another great example. Let's talk about governance. This is a political question that everybody should be answering. And it's not about whether or not you're a Democrat or Republican. It's about, is the city pro-growth? Is the city high tax? Does the city have a good police force and do they stand behind them? Because at the end of the day, that's going to create safety and security for all the residents because they're going to understand that the taxes are beneficial in the area or that they have got something to fear. And again, back to the FOMO, nobody wants to be the last one trying to leave town on the train. The other thing is when you're talking about regulations, let's talk about Airbnb. I know quite a few people that have made a really great living with Airbnb product. And I do believe in the business model. But if you are trying to expand your operation in a city that does not like it and is clamping down on, that may not be something where you want to deploy more capital because it could be something that leaves you winding up short and needing to exit in a hurry, which with real estate is never a great option. You also need to understand market cycles. Are you in the boom cycle? Are there a lot of product coming online? Are you gonna be in the oversupply cycle? Where exactly are you hitting? Because you don't wanna be the last guy to the party buying at the peak of the market when there's a bunch of supply coming on in the next couple of weeks. So here's the thing I would tell you to do. Pick a region, pick a city, dive into that market. Start looking at the market reports that are available from the large commercial brokers. Start calling around to multifamily developers or investors or even the realtors that are selling that product. See what they think call property management companies. Go into a deep dive on that market and see what you think about that market and see if it lines up with what some of the big forecasters are saying before you go all in. As you get more proficient at this, you'll know the right questions to ask. You can actually begin to build out quite a due diligence spreadsheet that can help you ask the right questions of the right people before you get too involved that allows you to make the right decisions for your real estate portfolio. So here's the thing, guys. I'm gonna challenge you guys to leave your comments below and let me know your insights or some of your secret ninja moves on how you're analyzing markets to find the best ones to put your investments in so that your real estate investment is safe for the long term.